in the sense that you have created this world that is um, absolutely original. I mean, um, <clears throat> it looks yeah. like something familiar, like you go, you know, yeah. with your family to the Alps. Yeah. But then, um, yeah. I'm not going to give any spoilers. This is the press conference. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> but, with uh, this movie, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, not to spoil. But yeah. It but is. I, I do like that. Um, I do like the feeling of familiarity. Mm -hmm. um, I. Um, it's sort of, um, you know, you kind of have have seen it, and I like I like um, I like the feeling of history in scenes. I like to have um, a stacking sort of historical styles on top of each other. So you have like a certain old type of um, architecture, and then a, maybe a little bit newer um, interior design, and then the fashion is also still old. But then. Right somebody just has a smartphone, right? And, 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 and it's kind of hard to pin down when, when it actually happens. But um, I think that's, a, that's the, my, my, my main job, is to sort of build a world, a different, a parallel universe, I guess. A know? new one. <laughs> <laughs> a cuckoo one. <laughs> we have a question over here, please. Uh, hello, Kras Kiribay from Kazakhstan. Um, I generally think that Cuckoo is one of the most refreshing horror movies of the past year at the very least. And I think it happens to be so unique, uh, yet, you know, recognizable in so many ways. We've already mentioned Chalo, references to Shining. I saw some visual reference to this to Psycho. And my question is actually to Tillman because of that. Uh, what were some of the horror movies that inspired Cuckoo? In, if you could pinpoint the titles, or if you could talk about the particular periods, countries, that's the first. And the second, what do you think, uh, you know, horror genre right now is one of the biggest vivid genres in the world, right. and it's taken new directions. So what do you think will be the future of horrors in terms of topics, themes, <laughs> whatever? So, yeah, uh, big questions. <laughs> Big questions. Um, okay, so to the first thing, I don't think I can pinpoint like the exact inspiration. I, I didn't have a blueprint, but I mean, of course, I'm very, very flattered that you saw The Shining in there. Um, it was the one thing, we, we went location scouting and we found this old British army base that was abandoned. And this, all of this, all of these like rundown buildings that were on this area, in this area. And they had a, I forgot what they called it. It was sort of like for when they had banquets, right? And they had this huge hall, this wooden hall. And when I, when, when I stepped foot in there, I, it, like the shining just hit me. And I was like, oh, okay, we have to shoot it. We absolutely have to shoot it. And it was a blessing that we did because we had this cool sort of wasteland um, to us, to the uh, production. Um, the future of horror movies, I have no idea where it's going to go. Um, I do love horror movies very much, though, ever since I'm a child. I don't know. I never lost this. It's a lot of children have this sort of fascination with the grotesque, I think, and the horrific, and, you know, like, scary stuff, violence. Uh, it's fascinating to children. And I never really lost that, I think. It, I think um, the horror genre is just such a thankful um, way to tell a story story with um, because it's very fun and it it makes you feel these outrageous feelings you know like it's 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 very it's very um, it gets to you sure tack one on uh, what direction would you take personally with the next maybe projects in horror movies what would you like to what type of stories would you like to tell um, I don't know yet I don't know yet. It sort of it always comes, you know. It's uh, with with the with the, with the cuckoo. Um, my inspiration literally came from watching a documentary about the cuckoo bird. I knew what it was doing. I think most people know that here in Germany, but um, I kind of forgot how gruesome it is, <laughs> and it made me feel these extremely strong feelings. And I was like, all right, I should do something with that. Thank you. We have a question over here on the right side and then two in the middle. Hi, I'm Ross. I'm the director of Campus TV Marburg. It's a student-run organization in Hessen, a uh, federal state where you filmed your film, which is actually part of my question. Sure. Um, yes, it might be a bit personal uh, about Hessen and Germany, but you filmed the film in Germany, and I'd like to ask the actors who aren't German, sorry, 
Mr. Singer, obviously you're German, so. I'm checking out. Um, that's all right. Um, so what's your experience filming in Germany like? And especially, yes, I know, Hessen. Uh, so just general experience of, I mean, I don't know if you filmed in Germany before, but especially like in Arberg in Hessen where the villa was. What's, what's the general consensus of filming in Germany? What's the feeling you've got? Very German. <laughs> <laughs> Well spoken. <laughs> 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 yeah, cool. <laughs> well, I guess also the question is, were you actually in the mountains? No, we, ah. no, we used deceit and trickery. <laughs> no, but we did go to the mountains at the very end yeah. to, to, to shoot some stuff. Where was Hessen? Where did we film in Hessen? Uh, it was that's, the last. That's the military base. The right? last, no, it was the last no. two weeks, I think. Oh, I missed Two that. weeks? One and a half weeks? It's, it's a, the, we, were, we went to Wiesbaden, that cute city. Okay. Um, Wiesbaden. Yeah. yeah. And uh, from there we went around. And, um, the the house, it. particularly, is such a, an important part of the film, or at least a part of the film. And I can't remember who designed that house till now. Richard mm. Neutra. A, a great, no, great arch, arch, architect. Yeah, that house. That house um, had a, you know, uh, a, a personification of everything that was going on. Every every angle of the house and every room we went into and outside and in. It was like a terrarium. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah you, it's it's for watching people from outside. From that lots, lots of glass and windows going on in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Who can see in what's reflected? What you can't see. Um, the, I mean, when you're working, those are the kinds of things to answer your quest questions uh, with a little more length. Um, that, those are the kinds of things you experience. And also the people who owned the house who were not like the world that we were in, who were very, very kind. So um, these are the kinds of experiences that you have. And some of us got locked in hotels during the COVID experience also. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I tried... Currywurst. I've, <laughs> I've been vegetarian for like seven years or something. And you will be forever no. now. <laughs> you, I, that was well, the end of I'm it? I'm fully a meat eater now because <gasps> of the currywurst that I had. Germany. Oh, no. so. it was I have our, Germany it was to thank Gaffa's uh, homemade. His name was Gruber. Homemade. It was very it's good. Gruber, yeah. And he makes an incredible did you have it? curry. I did. Roast. I did. It was good. Many people yeah. broke the yeah. edge that day, I think, and went yeah, from vegan good. to. I think I had five. <laughs> <laughs> Six. Mahari, please. You're in the middle. Uh, first, a compliment. This is a Tim singer film. No. No, because I saw Dario Gentile as a young guy, and this is your film. But I have a question about the ending, this okay. shooting, because uh, it was a bit, <laughs> a bit hard. The ending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why did you choose that ending? And then uh, can you talk about the music and the effect, you know, sound effect? Because we saw the film yesterday, yeah. and we have big armchairs that you can lay down. Yeah. It was all shaking. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so can, can you tell us more about sure. the sound effects and the, the music well, also? The Absolutely. Um, I, um, I'm going to hold back with talking about the ending too much. But um, it is pretty rough. I feel everything that happens in the end concretely has um, a certain meaning that relates to the characters and how they are and how they fight things out, you know? Um, <clears throat> so to me it feels to me it feels really organic to like a necessary ending to the story about the music there's so much to say um, first of all our composer Simon Vasco did an amazing job again um, he I'm working with him on all my movies and um, <laughs> This girl actually also did an amazing job because um, I wanted to have some um, so she learned the bass because she has a scene where, 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 where you have to play bass, right? Um, and then I thought about what, what, what song I could give Gretchen, the character, and I thought, oh, she should listen to something noisy and something romantic. And then I thought, okay, maybe the Jesus and Mary Chain. I would, I would give, give her that. 
And um, that quote came back way too high, and my producer said, no, you cannot have it. And then I was like, oh shit, everything else on my list is probably unaffordable too. There was like suicide and stuff on there. Uh, so I tasked Simon to please write me a song in the Jesus and the Mary Chain style. And he did, like this. And then Hunter learned it, and then Hunter also, we recorded it in your, your We hotel. recorded it. In the hotel bathroom. In oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Ooh. We had to move. In Biersbaden. And, uh, because uh, there was a festival outside or something. All of a sudden, they started playing really loud music outside, so we had to move into yeah. the bathroom. Yeah. But maybe we got a nice reverberation. But I was kind of hoping for like the echo to help me out, yeah. because I'm not a singer by any means. Yeah, but you don't need help. <laughs> this is how cool you, know, you, you approach this, and you just do it. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. <clears throat> we have another question here in the middle, please. Hi, um, I know that horror movies often push you as actors um, to explore dark themes and um, extreme emotions. And I was just wondering if you had any techniques to navigate through those um, and what it was like. You have some you. techniques. Yeah. I, <laughs> I see you prepare in scenes, which are very beautiful moments. You know, when things calm down, you go to a certain place. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have, I didn't go to school for acting, and I'm still, like, kind of figuring it out, you know, every time I do it. Um, but, um, I mean, I don't know. With, like, emotional stuff, um, I don't know. I don't know how to do the kind of acting where you, like, figure out how to move your face muscles in a way that, like, you can, like, just, like, <laughs> simulate cry. Like, I have to, like, you know, kind of go there and just, right. like, get sad. Um, but honestly, the biggest thing is having, like, being surrounded by people. Because, like, the scariest thing going into that is, like, is, like, oh, my God, what if it gets, like, too real or something, you know, like, or too intense and then I'm, like, not okay or whatever. If you're feeling okay with the people that you're with and that you're filming with and, like, for one really sad scene we had to do, I remember I just, like, needed to hold someone's hand and he just came up here and he held my hand and then, uh, so, um, I, feel I like had that same experience yeah? with Tillman. Yeah. Just being there. When he wasn't there, I couldn't get to that point, and then he just uh, was uh, behind the camera, and it just mm -hmm. went. Yeah. Thank you, Tillman. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for doing this, guy. Tillman has our hands. <laughs> <laughs> I like holding hands. <laughs> the next question is over here in the middle, and the um, front, hi. and those are going to be the hi. last two questions. Okay. I'm Chris from the Disapproving Swede uh, for Tillman Singer. I really, I'm a big fan of your first film, Lose. Oh, I, I, I rewatched it so, so many times. Oh, so you. I was worried now with the bigger project that the style would go away. Did but it? But it, no, it did not. <laughs> so I would like to know how you approach the cinematography and the, and the editing specifically. For, um, this was a really great experience. Thanks. So the editing process, I'm still figuring it out. Um, it's <laughs> really, um, I'm not a master by any means, and the writing process is the same. I don't really know what I'm doing, but um, when I write, I do write in pictures. And um, it's usually my, the, the biggest clues for me if something works or not. And uh, uh, sorry, I, um, always, I always do figure out a big part of the uh, cinematography or the style out while writing, because it just plays in my mind. And then, um, and then I take a long time actually with uh, the cinematographer Paul Falz um, to figure out the scenes concretely. Even though it means in the end that we have to sort of like throw 50% out of the window because we don't have time for that. But it's very good to prepare um, in a certain way, so you know what's important, and and then you can limit yourself to the one shot, you know, that you can do and can do right. Yeah. Please go ahead. Last question. Hi, I'm Melanie Goodfellow from Deadline. I was just um, really interested in the fact that this is a US production and how you connected with Neon. I don't know if you can, it might be a bit of a long story, but just, and, and just the difference between making, you've made films uh, in German and then having this big cast and, um, you know, working like on a US production. Um, yeah, I, I guess we did like kind of a hybrid, no, of a German and US American film. Um, we had German crew, um, we had an international cast, we shot in Germany, um, um, also financed by Northern Westphalia and Hessen uh, Film Funds, they gave us money, and um, Neon, 
um, being the most amazing supportive partners I, I can hope for. Uh, it was fucking incredible working with them. Um, and I couldn't be happier. Um, I can't really speak to the difference that much because I've never shot a truly US American film in the States. So I don't know. Mm, that might happen. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, I, I have no concrete plans, but let's see where, where, what happens. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for your questions thank you and so for much, joining Karen. us today. Have a wonderful work for you tonight.